Hi plant lovers, my name is Carline and today I'm going to talk about fertilizing. Keeping and caring for houseplants can be a bit intimidating, especially if you're just starting out. As a new plant parent, you will find out that there is much more to taking care of plants than you think. One of the things you will find out is that plants need nutrition. In this video, I explain everything you need to know about plant fertilizing, share my best tips and show you a fun DIY to make your own plant food. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Houseplants need nutrition, just like we do. Think of it this way. We eat food, our bodies get energy and nutrients to grow and stay healthy. Plants need the same thing, but they get it in a different way. They don't eat food like we do, but they get their nutrients from the soil they grow in. While outdoor plants can pull those nutrients from the big ground around them, our houseplants only have the soil in their little pots. You can imagine that the nutrients in this potting soil will run out once. So they need some extra help from us. As we sometimes need a vitamin boost, our leafy friends also benefit from added nutrients. It just keeps them looking lush and beautiful. You can tell when the nutrients in the potting soil are used up. Luckily, your plant will tell you when it needs nutrients again. Signs that your plant could use some nutrients are yellowing leaves, stunted growth, pale leaves, poor flowering, thin, weak stems. Keep in mind that these signs are just a guide. Other factors can also be the cause of your plant showing these signs. Giving your plant too much food can be as bad as giving it too little. Most houseplants endure regular feeding as long as they are growing. Their active growing period runs from spring to early autumn. Think of spring and summer as the busy seasons for our plants. They're like little workers growing and thriving because the days are longer and warmer. That's when they need extra food to keep up their energy. When autumn comes around, the day gets shorter and cooler. Some plants take a break. They slow down and rest because there's not as much sunlight or warmth. This break is like their little winter vacation. Keep in mind that not all plants follow the schedule. Tropical plants, for example, don't really know what winter is because they're used to warm weather all year round. So they might keep growing even if it's a little chilly outside. Plus, if you're keeping your plant indoors, where it's toasty and bright with grow lights, they might not feel like they're taking a winter break either. The key is to pay close attention to your plant and adjust your care routine to its needs. Are you wondering how often to feed your houseplant? This depends on the type of plant and their needs. Each plant has unique needs and will need more or less fertilizer. Some plants will need it more diluted or less often than others. For example, cacti and succulents thrive in poor soil with less fertilizer, while fast-growing tropical plants like peace lily, monstera and alocasia require more nutrients. I advise you to check their specific care guides. You can find those guides on our website. Okay, now you have some background information on why and when plants need nutrients, we can move on to the process of fertilizing itself. I will start by explaining what types of fertilizers there are. There are a few different types of fertilizer you can use for your houseplants. The main ones are liquid fertilizer or granular fertilizer, also known as slow release fertilizer. There are also other fertilizers like organic fertilizer, water soluble fertilizer and specialized fertilizer. Let's break them down. Liquid fertilizer come in liquid form and they're usually mixed with water before you apply them to your plants. They're fast acting and can provide a quick nutrient boost. Granular or slow release fertilizers are in the form of small pellets or granulates. You can sprinkle them around in the soil and they will release nutrients slowly over time. So you don't have to fertilize as often. Organic fertilizers are made from natural materials like compost or seaweeds. They're gentle on plants and soil. They improve soil structure and fertilize over time. Water soluble fertilizers are similar to liquid fertilizers, but come in a powder or crystal form that you dissolve in water before using. They're convenient and easy to apply. Specialized fertilizers are formulated specially for certain types of plants, like orchids or cacti. They often have the right balance of nutrients for those particular plants' needs. So which plant fertilizer is the best for your house plants? That depends on the preferences and specific needs of your plants. Liquid fertilizers are popular because they're easy to use and provide nutrients quickly. But slow release or organic fertilizers can be better for long-term soil health. 
The best fertilizers consist of a special mix of very balanced minerals and nutrients that will help your plant grow. We have two different fertilizers in our shop. Together with plant experts, we have put together a special liquid fertilizer. This one is full of growing power and is absorbed by the roots of your plant super quickly. Also, as you can see, our community loves this nutrition. When we look at their fertilizer specific composition, it offers a detailed breakdown of both macronutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium, and a bunch of micronutrients. If you are interested in a detailed list of all ingredients, I'm happy to refer you to the link in our description. So let's check the bottle and give our green friends a vitamin boost. Did I mention that this fertilizer is also suitable for semi hydro plants? Our other nutrition is a slow release fertilizer, Osmocota. As I said, this is super convenient and gives your plant enough nutrients for about six months, depending on how hungry it is. You can add the grains to the fresh potting soil when you're repotting your plant or simply sprinkle some grains on top of the soil. I hear you think, doesn't a plant need different nutrients in summer and winter? Well, you're right, Osmocota can help you with this too. When the temperature is warmer, the grains release more nutrients than when it's cold. Super helpful, right? Now that we have seen how to use these two different types of nutrients, I also would like to show you a fun DIY hack. After all, we have plenty to make our own plant food at home too. One of the main components in our plant's nutrition is potassium, which strengthens the plant and its root system and makes the plant more resilient to diseases. Besides that, it contributes to the photosynthesis process, which is crucial for producing healthy stems and flowers. Banana peels are high in potassium, which will benefit your plants. So don't throw them out, but instead chop them up, put them in one liter cup or bowl and fill it up with distilled or rainwater. I would suggest putting in three banana peels, leave it in for three days. After those three days, you probably have to dilute your mixture with some more water. Since the mixture can be very strong, my advice is to add five liters extra water before giving it to your plants. Another component of our plant's nutrition is nitrogen, which can be found in coffee grounds. Besides that, it will also increase organic matter in the soil, which will help with water retention. So when you're done brewing your coffee in the morning, don't throw it out. Keep it in a bowl and sprinkle it on the top of your plant's soil. And that is it for today's video. I wanted to tell you about nine common mistakes when feeding houseplants, but I noticed that this video would be way too long. If you can't wait, be sure to check out the description box below. If you have any questions or fertilizing tips, make sure to drop them in the comments below to help our community out. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful for you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.